well, which doesn't, he will literally show to geldings. And then if they're mares in season, he actually then um, will become a stallion and go, oh, am I supposed to do something? Do you know his heart rate is really, really high? Really? That, yeah, that really surprises me. He is internalising. So before we do the procedure, Dr. Louise, as you'll see, IV is just uh, giving him some sedation. Uh, this boy's name is Tuffy, and that'll just uh, quieten him down for the duration of the procedure, which is about half an hour. And uh, it's just a, a light sedation. Away, otherwise he'll choke. No food. Tuffy's not allowed any food. This room with your friendship? Yeah. Don't worry, the room will start spinning it with your friends again. So I just want to have a look at his shoulders. Standing square in the crush, I have a look at their shoulders because a horse um, will compensate through their shoulders if they're not engaging this hind end. They'll fall to a particular shoulder um, and it's, it's always the contralateral. Um, and his shoulders are pretty uneven. So um, I'm just going to move that main. There. Um, and I'm looking at the musculature. And he's actually, at the front of this right shoulder, he's got a huge muscle there that he's almost like bracing um, on that shoulder. And they're just not nice and even and sloped. They're all over the shop, really. If you come and have a look on my stool, you can have a look at his shoulders. So this muscle here is the... Oh, yeah, I see, yep. Yeah. Yep, and they're just not even. So no, they're not. not. Yeah, yeah. And it just means he's not moving evenly. doesn't mean that he has internal issues at all. It just means he has issues. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, and that's the big thing. I'm not going, oh, my God, this horse is bugging internally. Uh, and this shoulder actually looks like it's lower, but they're not. It's just a musculature. Yeah. Um, you know, unless he does have a shorter leg, then yes, it is a smaller pup. I can't imagine um, that's the case. And so they, they fall to their shoulder when they're not engaged in the hind and then one over the Yep. Okay. And it always um, indicates the contralateral. So if he's not using this hind, he'll fall to that shoulder. Yes. And so now I want to feel those solus muscles again um, because he's relaxed. And a muscle has to have a relaxation phase, otherwise it won't repair. Do you want to sit straight? No, he can do what he wants now. Yeah. And so the right one was, so the left one was smaller and contracted. The right one was over contracting, yeah. but it felt like an okay size. The right does not relax at all. It's staying contracted. Um, the left actually relaxes. So what that's telling me is that the right psoas is potentially pain guarding. It's constantly on. The left hand side is atrophied because during locomotion and general day life, it has to do all of the load bearing of this entire animal because this side's doing something else. Yeah. So, um, that's the psoas that I'm talking about. So now I follow the psoas to the iliac crest where it joins the iliacus muscle and becomes the iliopsoas. And I'm just following that down towards the um, inguinal ring. That actually forms a border of the inguinal ring inguinal ring is where the testicle migrated through yes. to go into the scrotum. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a sort of important area. Um, interesting, he doesn't have any adhesions in the right inguinal ring. So that's, un that's not what I expected. I expected to find massive amounts of adhesions. 
in there. He's spasming when I touch down here. Um, but yeah, no adhesions. It's very congested though, this muscle. This is the one that's not relaxing, so it's continually holding on. Right, okay. Um, really congested towards the insertional point. I can't feel the insertion because it's the head of the femur where it inserts, but I'm heading down that way. And he doesn't like me massaging it because it's contracted. Okay, so heading to the left hand side, which is the one that does relax, but it's too small. Okay, it's atrophy. You do have to biopsy a muscle to prove that it's truly atrophy. Yeah. I have to put that in because I'm on tape. Um, <laughs> so, but when I go to the left inguinal ring, he yeah. has adhesions all on their truncheon in his left inguinal ring. So he has massive adhesions in his left inguinal ring. This is his reaction when I'm on those adhesions. Okay. Now, if you remember back to when I fell, his inguinal rings, yeah. I went, oh, that left one's disgusting. Yeah. There was no movement externally, which means the adhesions are from the deep end into the superficial. Yeah. Um, so he's got adhesions in his left inguinal ring. And excellent. Um, I'll manipulate those muscles and break them down. So what I do first is just get some blood flow into the area, um, which is not fun for him. Um, and then I'll go around and have a look at some other And that's his grumpy face. And yeah, yeah. He's and, quiet, so. and they're males, their pain threshold's very low. Yeah. Put that on tape. <laughs> so now I'm just going to head up towards the kidney region. Yeah. Very controversial. Um, <laughs> and so the reason I want to have a look around that kidney area is because the testicle actually developed just behind the kidney. Yes. Yeah which is a stupid place to put it because it has to then migrate down into the scrotum during sexual maturation. Yep. So it has to go from all the way up here to all the way down through yep. to the scrotum. And so the nerve artery and vein branch out just behind that kidney. So I want to have a look around that area. And also I want to feel the kidneys just to see how their fascia, because they share that same fascia with the psoas muscle. So I want to see if they're congested or anything like that. So the left kidney, it, but this is the, um, <laughs> this psoas is the one that's um, been atrophied, like it's, it's overloaded and overworn itself out. And so it just means it's, it's a chronic issue. So all that pooling around the kidney is just a chronic problem. Um, while I'm on this left hand side, I also have, come and have a look at the spleen because the spleen tells me how it has to the immune system, how internally he's coping. Um, and um, it's actually um, quite central and very congested. He is, um, he's not old, old, but he's an older boy as well. Sometimes it can just mean that he's got a sluggish spleen. Um, but it is one I'd probably recommend giving him a little bit of a boost okay. with his spleen. And we just use rose skin for that. Okay. And so while I'm on the left hand side, I'm just checking dorsal and ventral colon. Um, as well. So large bowel, everything has to glide over itself internally here. Um, that's good on the left, so coming over to the right, doing the same thing, making sure dorsal ventral colon can slide over. 